separation theorem. Fisher developed a theorem where it said that the companies can separate the decision making with respect to investments. Investment means the investment in the business which is called physical investment and dividend decisions. So even though the shareholders say I want more dividend, less dividend, company has is able to separate these decisions clearly. How? Let's have a look. The learning objectives explain how the company's managers can in principle make the financial decisions that will be supported by all shareholders. So Fishers has developed a theorem where the decision making will be supported by all shareholders and why and how it is possible because of the existence of the capital market line which makes this possible. Identify the company's optimal investment and dividend policy under the conditions of certainty. So Fisher said that under the conditions of certainty we can find out what is the optimal decision, investment decision and what is the optimal dividend policy. Fisher's separation theorem. The theory is stating that a firm's choice of investments are separate from its owner's attitudes towards investment. So company has different kind of shareholders. Some prefer the more dividend right now and later less. Some prefer less right now, later more. So company can't keep on changing the dividends as per the different preferences of different shareholders. So Fisher stated that it is possible to separate the firm's investment decision from the firm's dividend decision. Fisher's separation theorem taught us that how the company can separate the investment decisions from the dividend decisions. Let's see how. We are in period 1 and period 0. C0 represents the consumption today. Okay, we are operating in a two period model, period 1 and period 0. And C0 represents the consumption today. By consumption, I mean the dividends that are given off net of any investments. So the first step, what will the company do? Suppose let's say the company has 1, 2, 3 A, B, C projects. Project A gives 25% return, Project B gives 20% return and Project C gives 15% return. So the company will first arrange these projects in the descending order. Okay, Each project whichever the highest return to the lowest. This curve we represent as Y0, Y1. If we invest Y0 today, we get Y1 in future. Okay. Now, the company has to make a decision to which project should it invest and how much dividend should it give. Now, in order to have how much dividend should it give, we introduce the capital market line. This is the capital market line. By capital market line, I mean the companies can borrow and lend in the market at a given rate of interest. Let's say that rate of interest is 10%. Okay, so if I need more money, I can borrow at 10%. If I need, if I have excess cash flow, I can lend at 10%. So, by imposing this capital market line on my investment proposals, this line, curved line is called as a production opportunity frontier. POF. Okay, this is a capital market line. So, let's represent a W, W1 plus R. If I invest W, I get W1 plus R in period 1. Now, when I impose the production opportunity frontier and the capital market line together, I get the optimal investment. The tangency point is the optimal dis investment, below which the investments are suboptimal. That means the company should invest up to this point and the remaining part should be given away as dividends. So this is a C star 0 is the remaining part which I give away as dividend. So let's put it in numbers. Let's say the company has Y0, that is the money today the company is, has is 100 million, okay? And the investment requires, the investment that is a tangency point in order to invest up to point I, they require 60 million. So what have we found? The optimal point is 60 million. So the remaining I need to give away as dividend. Let's say which is 40. 
so the company decides to give away 40 as dividend in the current period so the shareholders have 40 million dividend in the current period and in the period 1 this 60 which the company has invested in the business will grow let's say it grows at 25 percent because business will of course give you more return right so let's say this is 75 current dividend is c0 which is 40 in future in period 1 the company will give dividend which is 60 which was the investment done grows at let's say the 25 percent so the company is ready to pay 75 million as a dividend in period 1 so what is our conclusion the company shareholders in period 0 would get 40 million as dividend in period 1 would get 75 million as dividend okay now let us introduce there are two shareholders shareholder a and shareholder b they have a unique utility function shareholder a says i don't want 40 million now can you give me 15 million now just give me 15 million now and give me the rest in the next period so that means instead of having 40 now so 40 minus he just wants 15 that's 25 he tells the company to take it back and invest in the business but the company has already decided that it requires only 60 million for a business so what would company do it will give 15 million to the investor and invest rest 25 million in the capital market at 10 percent rate and in the period 1 he will get C1A, C star A. So, investor A gets 15 in the period 0 and in period 1 it gets C1 which the company was supposed to give them plus the remaining which is 25, 1 plus R, right? So, which is 75, just trying to put it in numbers. R is let's say 10%. Now, this is one way the company can do. The second way the company can do is if the investor A wants 15 right now, but the company says you take 40 and whatever is your need, keep it, rest you invest in the capital market. So, instead of company doing that, investors can do themselves. This is what is the beauty of this capital market line. Because of the existence of capital market, the company has fixed up its dividend and the investment decisions. It has found the tangency point. This much is what I need for investments. That is 60 million. 40 million is available for dividend. Now, the investor has to decide how he has to use it present or in the future. So, this is a two way. The comp instead of company doing it, the investor can do it. Two, let's say there is an investor B who says I want little more now because of education of my son or anything I need. So ideally if you look the company is giving them 40 plus 75 which is around 115 total dividend from period 0 and period 1. But this investor says I want 105 now. So C star B give me less in the future I am okay with that. So C1 B. Okay. So, this investor, how can the company do in order to meet the preferences of this investor? The company can go ahead, give him 40 plus remaining borrow from the market for him. So, he wants 105. No, B wants 105. Correct. So, the company is ready to pay 40. So, how much remaining? 65. The company can borrow and give, it, give him 105 now. And so he gets 105 in period 0 and in period 1 the company was supposed to pay him 75 but 75 minus that 65 which the company has paid at 1 plus R that is a cost of borrowing the company will charge him and give him the remaining okay which is around 3.5 okay so now for the investor b 
he says give me 105 in the period today okay so see ideally the company is giving 40 today and 75 in the future so the total is 105 but the investor b says i need more money because of my child's education pay me 105 today and give me less in future so the company what can company do what company will do is it will give him 40 plus borrow the remaining that is 65 from the capital market at 1 plus R rate and give him 105 now and in the period C1 the company will give him 75 minus the 65 which the company had borrowed at 1 plus R. Okay, so the remaining amount 3.5 will be given to the investor in period 1. So, B investor will get C star B in period 0 that is today and C1 B in period 1. But instead of the company doing all this because of the capital market line, investor can go ahead and do the same. So, what are we trying to say here is because of the existence of the capital market line, the decision regarding the optimal investments and the dividend decisions are supported by all the stakeholders. For more details on finance topics, you can contact Palak Rajani at yahoo.com. Thank you.